Hey there guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris Olmi and as always we are back here playing some more Starters Order 6. Here at Rascalicious Farms this is the Start It mod. So in the last video we started off the season in pretty good form. I mean we can't really complain. We got you know seven wins out of seven races. Now Granted, six of those were maidens for very promising two-year-olds, and we should expect to win those. However, we did also have a win for Wild Retriever as a three-year-old colt. Now, looking at him with the extra speed there, decent cruising burst, you see the potential finish application. Yeah, there's a lot to suggest that this horse should have won its race as well. So, not really surprising winning all those races perhaps your games don't go that way but when you have this caliber of horses this is what you will be expecting now by similar sort of a uh, idea and similar criteria you can see that we've got some more two-year-olds we got four in fact so i'm expecting to get four wins from those two-year-olds in their maidens that's just the way it is Peach Pipe should get a win. She, yeah, she should get a win. She's not as convincing to me as Wild Retriever, but she should get a win. So that's another win there. So we're looking at five wins. An allowance race for Cresting Queen. I mean, this is my first sort of top three prediction where I'm not predicting an out and out win just yet. And Sweet Treats, over one mile, one furlong, grade two. He should win, but I, I think it's more likely to be a top three. I'm not going to say definite win there. Even though it's a grade two, when you take a step down in quality, sometimes you struggle a little bit. So, like Kristen Queen and Sweet Treats could be a pair of top three finishes with five wins before them. That's kind of what I'm expecting. If we're lower than that in any race... So first through the five races, and then third for the last two. If you finish below that in any of the races, I've got a lot of question marks as to why. On the side, could be one of those. Should be running at a mile, but there are no races of that distance just yet. So we're running in a six furlong maiden. Then we're probably going to put him out to the field. Let me just check and see, is there anybody else? Has already run their maiden. I do like to give everybody one race at the beginning of the season. So yeah, let's check the two-year-olds as well. This is what I don't do. I don't check the two-year-olds before they're due to run sometimes. And um, if that bar's gone up, of course, it might alter what I'm expecting from them. Sometimes it goes up on the morning of a race. Sometimes it goes up sort of um, after the race. But I have seen quite a lot of changes after that first run. So whether it happens before or after, I'm not sure in which horse case, but yeah. Okay, so Miracle Plays Blinker, that isn't going to affect it too much. I can find Fan Shrewd one, are both a little warm. Coltimus Prime looks like, that's a good name actually. I've got to stop there. Coltimus Prime, I like that name, fair play. Um, looks a little uh, laid back. We are favourites. This is, you know, just another maiden race, so I shouldn't expect too much in terms of um, strange happenings, let's say. So, we don't know how our horse likes to run. We've got rushing winds here, and it's a good start. Bad starts there for Coltimus Prime and Mil uh, Miracle Play. And now, as things go, we went out towards the lead there, but now we are starting to hold back a little bit and there we go we want to be running just on the hind flank of gdn gdn not sure what that is so we're going to contest the lead here four furlongs out we've got miss myrtle up into third from coltimus prime recovering from that poor start i can find final miracle play then 
combating Noah Shrewd when Hotchily Soup a little bit in the rear. It looks like Rushing Winds is a little bit of a front runner, maybe likes to be ridden handy, but this field just isn't good enough to really test. So Rushing Winds as we come in the two furlongs now. Icon Fan Fan starts making a move up, but Rushing Winds is gonna pull away here. Nice and easy. Not really too much of a struggle at all here. The horse is just galloping nicely down the home stretch. Shrewd one with a lovely little finish here. Not going to come close to upsetting us, but enough to take second. Miracle play in third, just beating Coltmus Prime, and that is going to do our first race as expected. It's a 4.2 length win. Impressive, I believe that the horse has a lot more under, um, under the hood than that. So... I'm happy. Race one done today. Beautiful stuff. So, where is uh, Rushing Winds? So, 97. That's pretty decent. I like I like horses between sort of uh, 95 and 100. You know, the higher the better. But 95 shows me that they are a good horse. So, Galloping Gusto. I'm not sure why he didn't get such a good re uh, rating. Return Voyage. And blissful retriever I think they might not have been tested enough so I'm hoping to get all those well the 290s should be over 100 in the next race and these two should be up to about 95 to 100 in their second races that's kind of what you look at or what I look at at two-year-old ratings so so far we are still perfect for the season peach pipe up next I do not expect that to change peach pipe is a good horse I rate her a second of my three three-year-olds um, and she is a grade one winner so this is a bit of a new territory though because we're testing at one mile three I'm not sure whether that's the distance for her or not if it is I expect a win if it's not then almost anything can happen sadly almost anything so she does like a slower track. I'm not sure how that's going to suit. Um, Alpha Tore looks like a decent little horse there. A little low on rating maybe, but comparative to the rest of the field. Um, yeah, low weight, so that's going to be an interesting one. Lover Ruckus does normally finish outside the top three, so that could be a nice little battle there as well. And um, yeah, there is another grade one, which is you said I do but they are unfancied at this point they are down at nearly 20 to 1 and I'm not expecting them to come into this race so Alpha Torre good start out into the lead peach pipe right there alongside and it looks like that's a uh, lover ruckus up into third beggar thy neighbor and you said I do almost together there right to the back Evanescent so a longish race here we're not gonna focus on the rear runner we're gonna keep an eye on this front five because there's only six in this race Evanescence only got a shot if they are a late runner if they are a closer it looks like Lover Ruckus is now gonna move past us into first behind us you said I do and uh, beg thy neighbor coming up the upside there Alpha Tori right in the middle now but being closed in on that rail got someone inside got someone in front got someone outside not really too much room to uh, room to maneuver excuse me six and a half furlongs left in this race here comes alpha Torre making the move up the inside now it looks like you said i do is going to try and punch through the field a little bit if they can Lover Rucker still leading us out here. Five and a half furlongs now. Peach Pipe in second place on that rail. Maybe looking to make a move fairly soon. Beggar Thy Neighbor does make a move up the outside. Going a little early, I'd say. Here comes Peach Pipe just making sure that nobody gets away. And this front five are very competitive with each other right now. Here comes Peach Pipe. Wants to be in the, f in the first place coming up to this final turn. It is a long turn, Alpha Torre round the outside, running really well into position with three furlongs left. You said I do now, trying to make a little move as well. Love a ruckus making a move. 
Great turn of speed. Here comes Evanescent. The closer as expected coming up near the inside. Beggar Thy Neighbors not doing anything. Alpha Tour right now cannot compete as Peach Pipe puts on the afterburners inside one and a half. Down to one furlongs from home. Here comes Evanescent. They are marching on at such a speed. But not enough to catch Peach Pipe. They got enough up into second place, left a little bit too much to do. Peach Pipe just quickens the pace a little bit too much and storms away with a win. So nine races, nine wins. Distance was probably far enough. Okay. So that suggests to me that they might be a mile three or they might be a mile two. So... I'm thinking, I'm thinking that we should test at a mile two just to be care, uh, just be careful there. We don't know really what is uh, happening there. So we will see. We will figure that one out as we go. But nice run by Peach Pipe. So I'm happy enough there. Is that bar even higher than it was? Oh, I don't know. No, no. Yeah, I think maybe another mile three might be in order. Then it's back to the Maidens. We've got Dangerous Minds here. Nice little coat. So, yeah, very nice little coat. Very, very nice little coat. Should expect to see a win here. I don't believe there was a huge field here. Yeah, not, not big at all. So, Dangerous Minds looks a little warm, does, as does Dark City. Reggae Rose is very warm. Cashing on a Dream looks like the horse that they all want to be tipping. Um, so let's see, slightly agitated, fit and ready race. Okay, that might not be bad. That might not be too bad. But cashing in on a dream. Another colt here. We're going to have to keep an eye on that one. That's the one that all the tipsters fancy. And it's a night race. So we will see how this one actually goes. But Dangerous Mind is the favourite here. Just ahead of cashing in on a dream. We will see what else happens. The rest of the field are 9-1, to one, but those two have been shown by the betting and by the tipsters to be the favourites. Cashing in on a dream right to the front. Decent start for most of the field here. Up in the second place is Reggae Rose. Booms a boom in third. Fourth now after a poor start is Secret Flame. Dark City there. Rust on Red on the outside and Dangerous Minds is at the rear of the field. Three furlongs from home. What is going to happen here? Can Dangerous Minds come through this field late on? Is, they, is he a closer? Is there a chance here? Or is that little bit of uh, agitation pre-race going to really stop us? We're going to make a move. Dark City now charging up the field as we come round this turn. One and a half furlongs down to the one furlong marker and the home stretch. Dark City and Dangerous Minds now trying to chase down Cashing on a Dream. Dark, Dark City's going to fall off. Dangerous Minds is going to come through and take second place behind Cashing on a Dream. Hey, Cashing in is a decent horse. And we lose a maiden. Not what we like to do. Still got an 89 rating out of it, so... Okay, not sure the trip suit did. Considering we struggle for pace. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's let's figure that out. Yeah, the bar didn't increase, so we're definitely looking here at Dangerous Minds being more of a six furlong rather than five furlong. We did seem to make a little ground late on there, which means maybe over another furlong, Dangerous Minds would be running in the correct sort of pattern. That little bit of agitation as well could play a part, so it's not a big worry, but we're learning stuff about the horse. We are learning stuff about the horse. So we've got a couple of days break before Secret of Mine and then on the side runs. And then we're up to the two older horses in this uh, in this barn or this stable. So Secret of Mine is the favourite. Looks like Larimar and Miss Marple are a little bit agitated. We are the favourite tipsters. Undulant Way. Yeah. Yeah, they are being backed a little bit in the betting so if we've got the distance right we should win this race as well 
So let's see then. Good little start for a bunch of horses there near the rail. Poor more close to the camera with Miss Marple taking up last place. Up to Arcade and Angela Way with Hammer's Bullet there. Then the front four, Secret of Mind, Boca Flyer, Larima and Surfcat all now almost side by side with Surfcat starting to push out as we approach four furlongs. Secret of Mind will go with them. And we're going to contest the lead and into the lead by three and a half furlongs from home. We will see if any challenges come from the rear of the field, but at the moment, Secret of Mine is moving clear of the chasing pack as we're down to two and a half furlongs here. Round this outside turn, Angela Way is now making a move up into second place, two furlongs from home. Will Angela Way be able to challenge here as we come off the bend? Does Secret of Mine really power down the home stretch as I believe it should? Down to one furlong, Angela Way falling back just a bit not going to get into challenging position secret of mind blowing away the rest of this field in an easy debut maiden race it's a win for secret of mind and that takes us up into a uh, heady territory indeed heady territory so we are 10 wins from our opening 11 that one win that we uh we missed out on we ran at the wrong distance and we were a little bit agitated before the race. So a couple of things there may be playing into it. On the side, the first horse, which I knew would be running at the wrong distance. Um, I wasn't sure about Peach Pipe and I wasn't sure about Dangerous Minds and one or two others, whether they were five or six furlongs here. On the side, however, should be running at a mile. So this could be the first race that we definitely definitely running the wrong one at and again agitated so if things go the way the first one did well you are looking there at second place a so stolen identity is the favorite for this race we will keep an eye on that if they win expect on the side to come in the second here maybe following the pattern not a great start though not a great start at all. The grey horse there, a little bit slow off the inside of the rail, will stick towards the back. Explain and Mickey Max, stablemates, our first and second with Loving Spirit up into third. Stolen Identity there is in fourth with Sulphur Art, Late Night Lover, Tropical Heights, Almaty Express, and on the side all close enough together. Four furlongs here. The way is blocked currently. Four on the side. Need to make a little bit of a move if we are going to get up into challenging position anywhere near the end of this race. It looks like Tropical Heights might be making a move. Here comes Late Night Lover as well. Either side of Sulphur Art. Stolen Identity is moving around the outside here. Coming up to the front three is a lovely little uh, burst of pace from on the side. But with one and a half furlongs to go. I'm not sure if they've got enough in the tank. Does on the side have what it takes here? We're down to one furlong. And there's a big kick on. There's a kick of speed. Look at the size of this horse compared to the rest of the field. Look at those legs churning the dirt beneath the hooves. And on the side is a ma magnificent closing horse there. What a run inside one and a half to one furlongs absolutely blitz the rest of the field despite being a little agitated despite being off the pace wow we still got told that that horse should be going for the really big money unbelievable stuff not what i expected out of that not what i expected out of that at all on the side a little bit too much stamina but what a classy horse He's got no distance adaptability either, which is why I was slightly worried. But, yeah, it, if we can get things going as a two-year-old and a three-year-old for this horse, one mile three average breeding distance. If we hit that with the bars we have, maybe the distance adaptability hurts us in terms of the preakness. But the triple crown is on the cards for on the side. Retriever and Sweet Relish obviously combining quite well there. So we're going to have to really think do we try and see if there's a graded race at about six or seven furlongs or do we wait until the mile races come out and run on the side actually on their um on their distance 
interesting very interesting to see what we will have have going on there let's go to the auction just in case there's anything there's a grade three there's another grade three there's no really good records so we're gonna step away from that one and then we just skip day to day to get round to cresting queen back in an auction two more grade threes high priced two-year-old which we really don't need but i like to see what's there um and yeah again not so good records when i'm looking at good records i want to see you know at least 15 to 20 races and at least half of those be wins because then if they're being run slightly off distance maybe they're a really nice horse you know that that's the kind of records i'm looking at if i don't see that then I don't stick about for any length of time whatsoever. So we're here now, Cresting Queen. This is a mile four allowance race. And yeah, why did I book a mile four for Cresting Queen? Why did I book a mile four? That's a mile two to a mile three, surely. Like a mile four is up here. Oh. Okay, I think we're running off distance. We are, you know, we're, we're a good horse. You know, Crescent Queen is a good horse. She runs quite well, and she might surprise some in this field, but... Yeah, I, I've, I've got a feeling I've misbooked this one. And this is something I normally don't do. I double-check. Weather could affect this. I wonder if it does. And it's a good start, Cresting Queen out into the lead. But I've got a feeling this might be a furlong a little too far for her. So, 11 furlongs, a mile three left to run in this race now. White Diamond at the rear with Chatham and Contested there. Kamika, uh, Cresting Queen dropping down slightly in Sacred Romance being overtaken slightly now, I feel, by, um, who is that? by contested um unbridled forever is running quite well in second fury gran is there or fury gran is there now as we move in to the last eight and a half furlongs long race so i'm not going to be too disappointed if we don't see anybody challenge these two quite yet but Creston queen is way down the field and has four horses almost side by side in front of her blocking off the track so yeah we're gonna see if that distance does play a part i think it might so white diamond chatham kamika contested and sacred romance all just ahead of cresting queen then some length up the track unbridled forever is leading um, no, sorry, not leading, is being led by Fury Gran. As we move under five furlongs, who's going to make a move? Here comes Sacred Romance a little bit, leading out the charge here. Looks like that gap is ever so slightly closing. Cresting Queen looks to be getting a little bit of track position ready, maybe to make a move up the field, but the doors in front are closing. Needs to find a gap to punch through. We're going to concentrate a little bit more now on the front two as Unbridled Forever is going to make a little bit of charge around the outside, but now loses ground as, Fu as Furry Gran starts making more of a move down to the front. We're under two furlongs now. Chatham Kamika contested Secret Romance and White Diamond are there. Round the outside will be Cresting Queen, but not pulling away as much as I'd like to see down to the final furlong. Here we come, but here also comes Unbridled Forever. Can we catch Unbridled Forever as we come down to the final sort of little bits of this race? And it will not be a win for Cresting Queen. It will be a second place on a misbooked race, I feel. I don't believe that was correct distance. I don't believe that was correct distance at all, but we came so close there. Cresting Queen in second, chat them up into third, Unbridled Forever. Re, uh, winning the race here oh yeah unbridled forever didn't have too much left in the tank cresting queen 
nice second place finish and we don't gain any distance sort of uh, feedback which I don't know let me know what you think guys in the comment section below was that too far was that far enough I'm really not sure where cresting queen should have run there but I've got a feeling that's more of a 1-2 to 1-3 range 1-3-1-4 is up here so Ugh, maybe maybe I misbooked that one slightly and cost her a win Dangerous Minds is very similar as well so we're not unbeaten throughout the season but we are 11 from 13 going in to the final race Sweet Treats here Grade 2 1 mile 1 at Santa Anita on the 6th of February so this will be the San Antonio like I say it is a grade 2 race so not the grade 1 competition that Sweet Treats is used to facing that might be a little detrimental normally when I race grade 1 horses at grade 2 level they don't win and I'm not sure why they're far more competitive challenging like for like horses Good record for Sweet Treats though so far, 11 from 17 wins, 11 wins from 17 races I should say. This is our four year old, this is the oldest horse in the entire stable. Let's go find the race and here we are, so we're not favourites for this one either, we are middle of the pack. Cranimal Boy is a horse I do know, very nice horse. And that is the favourite. It is also slightly agitated. It looks. Let's go down into the paddock and see what that says. Lean and ready to go. Okay. Okay. Tipsters. Cranimal Boy is the only one there. So, we are going to be looking for that V-neck silk. The white with black arms and the red V on the front. And it looks like it's out here on the outside. Very late start for Cranimal Boy. But catapults out of the gates there. And it looks like a decent one for Sweet Treats. Eight furlongs to go here. We've got a mile of this race to run. Let's see what we can do. We're up on the outside here looking to keep in touch with this chasing pack. Cranimal Boy out a little early. May not be able to finish if it pushes the pace too much. Stefan Stell, your secret edge. We know those horses. White Frost at the back with them. Then it's up to phone for Champagne. To guess the future impact. And Kakapuka on the inside rail. Another horse that we have raced against previously. We know Kakapuka and we know Cranimal Boy. They are both dangerous horses. Five furlongs from home. Sweet Treat is keeping pace with one of them. And not letting the other get away. Stefan Stelio is a decent closer in the rear of the field currently. Up moves Turgesti now, trying to make a little bit of distance on Cranimal Boy. The field now closing up slightly. Sweet Treats on the outside. Look to make a little bit of a move there before the turn. Drops back on the turn. Kakapuka is there now coming up the outside of Turgesti, trying to make a little bit of... Uh, a challenge here in the closing stages maybe sweet treats inside outside inside getting held up and blocked off a little bit by Tagesti and we'll go back inside might get blocked off here by Cranimo boy which I think is what's happened really poor jockey riding there not running into clean air running into the back of other horses three different times and we get third place so yeah, not much room inside final two furlongs. Why? Because the jockey ran a really poor race there. I think we could have competed at the line. I think we would have blown to Gesty away. We would have been within half a length and really been able to test Cranimal Boy in that race. I'm very disappointed with that. Sweet Treats comes out with a third here. And... Um, that's going to be a, a disappointing end to things. I think we should have got more there. We should have got more. So Sweet Treats comes in third. We misbook the distances for Crest and Queen, maybe. And we definitely did with Dangerous Minds. They come in second. 
we probably misplaced the uh, misbooked the race as well for on the side but they came through with a very very nice win all the others come in as expected in wins peach pipe and wild retriever as three-year-olds and then all my two-year-olds start off the season with a win apart from dangerous minds we can correct that next time all the other ones did well and as i say on the side looks like a very very nice horse the highest rated two-year-old is tightly contested but it's trader vic just ahead of green peaches sweet treats is still the number one horse cresting queen is well quite low down the order really despite having a year on other horses here so cresting queen there are question marks on from me right now let me know what you think about her let me know what you think about world retriever as well you know look at the bars decide for yourselves who's the class horse in this uh in this pack of three-year-olds i think it might be peach pipe or it might be world retriever kind of 50 50 for me sweet treats you know we need to get back up into uh, grade one territory and continue to try and win there very nice horse bred from two very nice horses so i think that we need to really test that one out but what two-year-old impressed you what do you think is our best two-year-old and also let me know should i put on the side out in the field or not tweet to me at chris army have your say in the comment section below if you've enjoyed the video smash that like button leave a comment let me know what you liked what you didn't what you want to see more or less of and yeah thanks for watching come back next time as we continue the season here with our two-year-olds at rascalicious farms all of them now with a big sort of a big start really to their careers if we can continue on with wins i think these two-year-olds will far far eclipse our three and four year old we still got here and may get up to dangerous and um uh stealthy lioness and um starboard princess they might get up to that level so let's see what we can do dangerous minds a little bit further to go but we'll run in another maiden i think just to make sure and we'll get the distance right there um once everybody's got two races a two-year-old under their belt we're gonna go for graded and really just push the entire field but thanks for watching as i say come back next time to see how that works out we'll see you here next time back at rocks delicious farms this is starters order six i've been chris Ormy, and y'all take care of yourselves